Hello and welcome back to Kettenveer. It is the 25th of Sandstone, 126, that is year 126, and it is mid-autumn. Winter is right around the corner, and before it comes, we've got a few things that we need to do. But first, I'm going to cover a slight change I've made. I've uh, changed the designations a little bit to have, instead of three staircases along the top, two up and one down the bottom. Now, I've increased the size of these rooms, and that's partially why I've, I've split them. Just so that I can have a few more embellishments in the rooms going up and down. These ones will go down though, and these two will go up. The reason why there's a larger gap in the middle here is because I don't know where I'm going to put the upward staircase, and I want to chisel that directly out of the stone, rather than uh, dig, mine it down to the pillar and then have to build a staircase, whereas up here I just dig through the floor, so it's not much of a concern. Now. Some people have pointed out that uh, an aquifer may cause us some trouble, but uh, I think we may well miss it. If you recall from the first episode, the aquifer is along the side, comes up and then through the middle. That's the forested biome where the aquifer uh, lingers. But the mountainous biome, which is along the left, uh, sorry, the right and slightly along the bottom, is doesn't have an aquifer. So. If we're at risk of hitting the aquifer at all, it'll be this one. I mean, I could be completely wrong, and it'll be both of these, in which case that's a, that's a bit of a problem, but uh, I'm sure we'll be able to get through it somehow. As I've said before, I quite enjoy the engineering challenges that an aquifer poses to you. Uh, the need to use screw pumps and various machines to get the the water out of the way and pump it out faster than it's flowing in from the aquifer so you can get a dwarf down there to actually build a wall to keep the water out it's actually quite fun to do if a little demanding now up here we are going to have to make a few changes first and foremost we're going to change the burrow i think that's uh oh, i didn't mean to do that let's remove citizens from this burrow the reason i'm doing this is because we are having a little bit of problem with people cancelling their jobs all the time. This borough is, has been put up more as a, as a demonstration later on. Maybe I can do something with it, especially if it becomes a dedicated barracks. But right now, the, the reason why it's causing lots of, of job cancellation spam is, for example, when this stockpile has an empty space, it says, oh, I need some wood. So everyone in here who's got wood hauling enabled, which is most people, are suddenly like, oh, there's, there's wood we can go and grab. Let's uh, go grab it. Oh, wait, no, it's outside the burrow. Ah, uh, never mind. Cancel job. And that will happen a lot in the space of a, uh, in a very small space of time. And the, the main concern with that is that it'll drown out important job cancellation alerts. So we want to uh, keep those off for now. You may notice that the burrow is expanding into this room here. And that's because I defined most of this burrow as a rectangle. So parts that... It remembers, even though it's not flashing down here, this is still part of the burrow, and if we, if we dug into it, it would still be designated. But further down, it's probably not got any uh, designation to the burrow, and we might need to add more to it, as we need to add a few more rooms. Now, let's... Uh, if I can get the right one, there we go, tab. Now, we want to designate a little bit more space. Someone has pointed out that currently we don't actually have too much room for people to sleep and although that wasn't too much of a problem when we only had a couple of dwarves it is starting to become a little bit of an issue now so that'll give us room for another eight beds now over here i would actually like a, a, a little barracks just a little training room it's not going to be particularly well liked with the people trying to sleep next to it if the military are training at the time but uh well you know it's better for us to have a military that's actually doing something than not now here i'm gonna add an underground farm about that big it'll just be a, a little thing for us to, to get some seeds planted because as you may have noticed this is no longer flashing and that's because we've actually got a farm which is amazing now i've already checked the stocks and we've got prickleberries and wild strawberry seeds but i'll just quickly go over everything here you can make a, f a field fallow for a season Everything is done on a seasonal basis. Right now we're in autumn, so anything I tell them to grow is going to only be grown in autumn. You have to do this for each season, but you can do it ahead of time, and then it's uh, cyclic. They'll they'll just use that guide for what to plant or, or whether to leave a farm go uh, a field go fa fallow for a season. 
onwards into, into the future for as long as you don't change it. You can also fertilize a field, but that requires potash and, and, and various other things. I think there are more things than potash that you can use, but generally speaking, that's something that I only do later on when I've got a lot of resources to use. But for now, I think we're going to plant some wild strawberries as it's autumn. And in winter, then we'll plant some prickleberries and then wild strawberries again in spring. And then in summer, some more prickleberries. So that'll give us a nice little mix. If we get any other types of seeds from brewing then we'll start planting them as well so hopefully our food uh so our druids should go out there and actually start to plant there we go that is fantastic now then what else do we want to do for the time being i'm actually going to undesignate these areas so that uh, not much time is spent digging out the areas that are going to grow up because I want those rooms that I've just designated to be built fairly soon so I'm just going to cut off the work there so that uh, Evelyn and Rock don't get distracted too much they will hopefully come back soon and start helping us up here now the other thing we are running low on a few things firstly winter is right around the corner and for dwarves that's a fairly important thing because that means the caravan from the mountain homes will be coming along the trade caravan also uh, a liaison from the mountain homes with whom you can have various trade contracts but it's mostly the trading that's important and for that we really really do need rock crafts the other thing that i would like this place to do is make some wooden bolts you can make bone bolts but they're extremely weak there's not much point in that so let's get that happening now um in the meanwhile we've well, we've just got to wait now on Evelyn and Rock, really, to dig this out. But one thing I, I have been kind of wanting to do for a little while is actually go over the uh, unit and find out a little bit more about it. A couple of people have asked. Let's, uh, I could go into the uh, individual screens for each row, for example, view creature there. I could hit thoughts and preferences, and I could just do this for each one. I could either read it out or I could just pause it and people could have a look at their dwarves. Um, let me know what you want with that one. But one thing I am going to uh, check out is the relationships tab. Now, as I've said before, uh, and possibly in, in my Normoria Let's Play as well, when comparing Dwarf Wars, the dwarves will make friends. If they hang out with people, they, they'll, they'll get to know them. They, they can make enemies as well. In fact, actually, wow. Avak, you've got two grudges. Taxfer, he... He's only just arrived. How have you got a grudge with him? My lord. Is this Avak I'm looking at? Yes, it's Avak I'm looking at. Oh my goodness. And he's got a grudge with Evelyn. That's horrible. But he's got a friend in Flying Staplers. That's that's okay. Man, two grudges though. Uh, what's happening to this place? He's got uh, quite a few passing acquaintances though. And a few long-term acquaintances. Maybe they'll become friends later on. But he has two gods. Eagle and... Uh, Eggert. I think we can can we look at them with a V for view. Eagle is a deity of the cremated furnaces. Eagle most often takes the form of a female dwarf and is associated with storms and lightning. Very interesting. So Avex like a Thor worshipper. Well, a female Thor worshipper. Um, the sunny tulip of gullies is a deity of the cremated furnaces. Most often takes the form of a female dwarf and is associated with plants and animals. So okay, so he uh, he worships the, the, the feminine deities, a bit of a pagan. It would be kind of cool if you had three goddesses that he worshipped, because I could make an even stronger association, but alas, no. Um, we can actually have a look at the, the other people, so let's let's go to you and check out your relationships. Why are you, why are you grudge? Wow, you know a lot of people. Holy crap. Wow. You've got... Wow. Your grandparents were busy. Holy crap. Uh, nephews, cousins. Oh my good. One of them is actually here. So he's the cousin of Einzido. That's kind of cool. Um, and uh, Festy and Rock. Wow. The whole, well, not the whole troop, but part of the troop came along. My god, how many pages of relatives have you got? Christmas must be a nightmare for Texva. My lord. Loads of passing acquaintances. You're. At odds with Avak, but you're a friend to Para. That's kind of cool, because you're both in the military. That's actually really, really cool. Awesome. 
But yes, and Evelyn, why why have you got a grudge, Evelyn? But, come on, let, let's talk it out. What went wrong? You worship the same people. You're a friend of Metasepia. You're, you've got a grudge with Shelab and with Avak. Oh, I see what's happening here. I think there may be a little bit of a love triangle going on. That's my guess. Perhaps Evelyn had, you know, was a little bit sweet on Avak, but Avak secretly holds a flame in his heart for Shelab and, and unfortunately rejected Evelyn. And so Evelyn now hates Avak and hates Shelab as well for stealing the man that she loved. Ah, man. Dwarvish drama gets me every time. But yes, so there's a lot of stuff that can go on. And if you've got the time to actually look through it, there, there's some very funny things you can find and some really interesting connections. It's very, very important to keep a, a vague knowledge of who likes who and who doesn't like who. Spe mostly, though, on who likes who, because if something bad should happen to someone, then the people who like them are going to get pretty sad about it. Uh, if they like them a lot, like they were married to them, they will get very sad, possibly very angry. And that's when tantrums start happening. But let's check out some other people. Um, let's check out Ravocaine. I imagine he's a bit more... A bit more in control. Yeah, he's merry. He's always drunk. He's got loads of friends. Loads of friends. Blind Staplers, Shelab, Plump Helmet, Medisapia. Long-term acquaintance of Avak and Evelyn. So uh, they've they've been here for quite a while, almost a year now. Let's check out your deity. The Glove of Controllers is a deity of the cremated furnaces. Kikrost most often takes the form of a male dwarf and is associated with oaths. Hmm. Hippocratic Oath. Ah, that, that could have a tie in there, possibly. Actually, let's check out some of your friends. Let's check out Shelab. Show me Shelab's relations. Tubal and one of the deities that I'm not going to ask. Well, the reason I'm not going to say ask is because that's a swear word in Welsh. Tobal is a deity of the cremated furnaces. Tobal most often takes the form of a male dwarf and is associated with mountains, volcanoes, fires, and metals. Oh, so more of a smithly god. That's pretty cool. Friend with Ravkane, grudge with Evelyn. Oh, the, the, it goes both ways. Uh, I was kind of imagining Sheila being kind of clueless to the whole drama surrounding her, but no. Uh, maybe Evelyn said some nasty things, some scathing remarks. Bad form, Evelyn. Bad form, Avak, really. Everyone knows if if, if a woman confesses to you, you, you the, the best thing to do is just... Well, it isn't really to lead them on, but... Let them down gently, at least. Don't don't form grudges. It just makes life hard. So let's check out Edna next. What have you got? Oh, you're married to. Oh, wow! Congratulations, Rock! Congratulations, Edna. Hopefully, there will be baby dwarves in your future. You are already married, so we're not going to have a wedding ceremony in the fort. That is a shame because they do do that. They have little wedding ceremonies. They were. I'm not sure if they have very big ones or if they just throw a party or something, but uh, you do get a little announcement for it and a little party happens. It's it's a, a good time. No grudges, no friends, though. That's a shame. One hopes that you are friends with your wife. <laughs> Poor old Rock. Let's see. So, Rock. Husband is Edna. Mon Monom is your mother. Mebzuth is your father. Wow. Paternal... Maternal, older brother, sisters. Oh, Vesti is your older brother. Ah, that's interesting. Wow, we've we've actually got some proper family intrigue going on here. Well, not intrigue yet, but I'm sure it'll become intrigue. Incido is a cousin of yours. So it seems that the, the first migrant wave, or possibly the second migrant wave that came along, I can't remember when I named you guys, um, did actually involve quite a lot of uh, families, which is always quite cool, because it does... Uh, give quite a lot a more rich environment let's check up flying staplers next though flying staplers datan seder uzol who's datan seder uzol the emerald of oiling hmm. the deity of the cremated furnaces datan most often takes the form of a female dwarf and is associated with minerals jewels and wealth okay so flying staplers is a little bit greedy on the side yes gonna have to keep an eye on her around the uh, gem bins uh, the Paint of Amethyst is a deity of the Cremated Furnaces. Uh, Anris most often takes the form of a male dwarf and is associated with rainbows. <laughs> That's amazing. Flying Staplers worships gems and rainbows. That is amazing. And quite fitting, I feel. You're a friend to Revkane, Metisepia, and Avak. Hey, 
Okay, well, that that's kind of cool. The Let's Players are all together as friends. <sighs> I'm gutted that Avax got two grudges. He can be assassinated or something. I can see it now. Evelyn, with the lead piping in the library. Texler is... Oh, wait. This is Blood Alchemy. Blood Alchemy is married to Texfer. Oh, this is awesome. We're going to have loads of little babies running around. It's going to be great. I'm undecided whether I'm going to name them based on your names, like a, a merger of the two, or whether I'm going to just put it out there and say, right, parents, tell me what your children's are named. Because I don't think I'm going to use the children to name as people off the off the waiting list. I might do. I don't know. But uh, I do kind of like the idea of uh, just putting it out there. Look, you know, it's your kid. What are you going to name him? And you'll have to agree. Maybe, maybe have a little vote. I don't know. Or an argument. Try not to have the argument in the comments. No no one likes domestics. But there we go. The, passing acquaintance with a lot of people. Not, not really very friendly yet. You haven't been here long, though. Uh, let's check out... Who else should we have a look at? Let's check out Plump. Because you've been here for quite a time. Good chance you'll have some interesting relationships. No. Just a, just a friend. You're a friend of Ravikane. You kind of keep yourself to yourself. Another worshipper of Ast, though. I don't know if who you worship has any relation on how you like other people who worship them, but maybe. And uh, let's check out Sim. Uh, the Frothy Gristle is a deity of the cremated furnaces. Sim, or Kim, it depends if it's hard to see, most often takes the form of a male bumblebee drone and is associated with muck and freedom. Ah, plump appreciates freedom being allowed to roll in the muck when one pleases that is why he's only got one friend but that's it for the relationships for now let me know if you want me to just uh, glance through your dwarf's uh, actual preferences in the future and i will do my best but uh i won't do that too often because it does take up quite a bit of time and time doesn't pass while it's happening maybe i could record a specific episode for it i'll uh I'll actually keep that in mind. Uh, let me know what you think, in fact. Uh, actually, that doesn't sound like a bad idea at all. I might record a special episode and just look through the dwarves. Meet the dwarves, it could be titled. Now, the farm has been completely planted with wild strawberries. Now, based on the planting skill, I think that dictates how fast it's planted or possibly how how well the plant will grow, but... I think it's largely the harvesting skill that dictates how many plants are returned when it's when it's harvested. Um, someone who might know more about that, please leave me a comment just uh, detailing what you ha happen to know about that sort of thing and uh, whether the planting skill affects how many plants you're going to get back at the end because that is quite important to know. I need a hatch cover because I don't like that uh, stairwell leading down into the reservoir. So make me a wooden hatch cover please and since we are starting work on a barracks as well also make me a training spear a training sword and a training axe and wooden shields yes that'll do now the training weapons are quite important um because i i they can still hurt someone because dwarf fortress doesn't do a whole oh this weapon does this many d6 of damage or anything like that it, it's based on weight and how sharp it is and things like uh, those sorts of things it actually models the properties of the weapon um and how it's used against someone but generally speaking a wooden training sword is going to leave someone with a bad bruise at most possibly a fractured bone now that can be quite bad depending on how good your doctor is but uh generally speaking having them training with wooden weapons is a hell of a lot smarter than having people who might not have a specifically very good skill training with actual weapons later on that's good because it you know i think it actually improves their skill a little bit faster but uh yeah you don't want rookies beating the crap out of each other with actual silver hammers and steel battle axes that that's just a recipe for crushed skulls and lopped off limbs and uh, as much as Ravikoin would try, bless him, I don't think he'd be able to stick you back together after that. So let's get some uh, food and drink going if we can. Hopefully these uh, arrows will be coming out now. Apparently you're not able to hunt because you're out of ammunition. I can only imagine you have been shooting things. There is something quite badly wounded there, I think. Let's have a quick look. A wombat. 
Let's have a quick check of your wounds. Right, you are actually reasonably wounded. The red obviously is indi uh, indicates something bad, and uh, it's also winded, but it's taken some nasty wounds to the head. Hopefully, it'll die. That X is showing that it's... Uh, yeah, it's just, it's bled out. That's fantastic. Grab that wombat corpse and take it back. I want that butchered right away. Hopefully. Oh, yeah, that, that sleeping room is filling up. I'm keeping an eye on that. Ooh. Aha! The outpost li liaison has arrived. The caravan has arrived. We have our traders. As you can see, they are bringing caravans. Now, the caravans, as I've said before, need a 3x3 three three accessible path all the way to your trade depot. Otherwise, they'll just leave. It'll check whether there is such a path when the traders arrive. And if there's not, the wagons themselves will bypass. They'll, they'll be like, well, we can't get to the trade post. We're leaving. But uh, you will usually still have like a guy who'll bring a donkey along laden with with loot to bring to your trade post the the important thing here though is that a wagon can carry an awful lot of goods a donkey or a horse not so much so that affects what they bring but also what they'll buy because if you're trying to sell them stone statues those are heavy they're not going to be able to carry so many of them in fact they might not be able to carry any of them depending on on whether they brought wagons or not. So it's very, very a, a good idea to have access for wagons. Now then, if we go over the trade post, we can actually see that uh, our broker is Avak. Avak's currently conducting a meeting, so that means the liaison's already grabbed him. Damn it. Uh, oh, okay. Rovod, something, something, something. I am your liaison from the Mountain Homes. Let's discuss your situation. Why, let's. Now, they're going to have a bit of a meeting on the price of goods. We will be able to actually request that the next winter caravan from the Mountain Homes bring certain things. Though You can't explicitly request it, but you can say, look, I'm really interested in these types of things. And there's a much better chance that they'll be brought. But they will cost a little bit more. Likewise, they will say the same sort of thing. They'll say, right, well, we're interested in buying, I don't know, crowns and will pay 170% of the normal price for crowns. So that gives you an idea of what you should be trying to make. So let's have a quick look. This is the list. You navigate this with plus minus to go down the type and then up and down to go around the goods and then left and right to increase or decrease the priority. Now, a word for the wise. You should choose something. You should say that you want something. Even if you have no intention of buying it when it's brought next year, if you don't, the liaison will get a little bit upset with you because you're not really conducting business. There's no opportunity for profit, so it can it can backfire a bit. So no matter what, you should pick something. So my usual go-to thing is just select a type of leather. Doesn't matter what. Let's have a look what we can grab. Something interesting. Uh, no, not cow leather. That's that's completely normal. Reindeer? Uh, no. Goose, goose leather? Okay, we'll, we'll take some goose leather. Anything else? There's llama leather there, but no, that, that's still kind of... Blue peafowl. <laughs> turkey leather. I... I. Okay, <laughs> we're going to have turkey leather. I'm going to make someone a turkey leather cloak. Right, so that's done. So we can actually look for things that we want. Crafts, generally speaking, you don't need them. But you can select... Like, for example, if you needed steel, so you could smelt things down try and, and bring steel crafts because you, you might not be able to request steel bars you usually can um but to increase the uh, odds of bringing along certain types of metals you could say you want certain types of crafts and then when you've got those crafts just smelt them down you don't need a toy drum but you could use the steel that it was made of to make something better now i've selected all types of bars and the reason for that is that uh, i don't know when i'm going to hit actual metal ore um sorry uh ores but they will be very useful um, for moods. I'll cover moods when we hit it. Suffice to say, though, that moods are how you get legendary items. Uh, not masterwork. Masterwork is just a factor of skill. But a legendary item is something far more important and is, is made by like a, an epiphany or a possession by some otherworldly entity that just drives the dwarf to distraction. They have to complete that thing. The downside of moods is that if they don't get to complete it, and that's usually because there isn't a certain type of material that they desperately need, that they saw in their dream, or that they just got this feeling in their gut that this thing needs to be made of that. If they can't get that, 
the, you only got a certain amount of time, but they will go crazy. And the crazy will take various forms. It could turn into a crazy, rage-fueled battle lust that just spills over and destroys your fort. Or they could just go throw themselves in the river and drown. You know, and that in and of itself isn't so bad until all their friends then get depressed because of it and then throw themselves in the river and drown or go on a crazy rage fueled battle lust tromp through your fort. It, it, it can get out of hand pretty quickly. Um, ammo, actually, yeah, we'll, we'll go for ammo. Hopefully, they'll bring some metal ammo. Um, pets. Do we want any pets? Yes, we do. We want cats. Now, one of these is male, one of these is female. So I'm I'm covering both bases there. We don't need dogs. We've got those. Uh, we'll take horses. Nothing else. Uh, actually, no. We won't take horses. We'll take cows. And ewes and rams, because we can get some uh, wool from those as well. That, that should be good. And the cows we can milk. Yes, we can make cheese with that then as well. We could take uh, some other types of birds if we particularly want to, but I'm not particularly interested. We'll take a yak, cow and bull though as well. Uh, I think that's about all we really need. Uh, I'll go for wine though. Now meat, koala meat. Have you got any koala meat? Please tell me you've got koalas. Now, our civilization might not have koalas. And if they do not, Abak's gonna be very unhappy. Means he's gonna have to trade with the humans, or worse, the elves. But he'll do what he has to do to get koala meat. Kangaroo, no. Fly, br what? How? Uh, I can't even butcher a duck because it's too small, and yet you've managed to butcher a fly? Really? Game, you're hacking. No, it doesn't look like we've got koalas. Cave crocodile, though. Hmm. Go on, then. We'll have some cave crocodile heart, liver, and uh, eyes to make some soup with. That's all we're going to do. So uh, that's that, then. Now, what we want to do is we want to start moving some goods over here. Because Avax's currently trading. Or, or rather, conducting a meeting. But we, the merchants won't stay forever. So we need to get our broker over here kind of soon. But before that... We're going to move some goods over. Now, we've had our um, Krasnov making some goods. So, you can select any of your items from this list and send them there individually. But what I find is easiest is if you hit S, then type in Finish, Finished Goods Bin. These are going to be the bins full of crafts, finished goods. You just hit Enter on them and it's marked to be brought to the Trade Depot. Now, there's another thing that I would like to sell. And that is gems. Because right now, well, we might not need it. I'll have a look. If there's something we really, really need to buy, I might sell some gems in order to get the money to get that. But generally speaking, gems are another thing you want to keep by for moods. At the end of the day, if nothing else, a gem put on a legendary item makes it st stupidly expensive. Like, you know, ridiculously valuable. So you could then better trade it for something else. Now, in here you can see that we've currently got no trader needed at the depot and only broker may trade. You can hit B to change that to anyone. Now, this is worth noting. If for some reason our broker, that is Avac, cannot get to the trade depot in time and I start worrying that the traders are going to leave, possibly because he's been tied up in this meeting because bureaucracy is bureaucracy, unfortunately, and red tape can tie up the best of us, um, then I could swap it to anyone may trade. And at that point, Anyone who's free will come along to do the trading. That should be a last resort, though, because generally you want one person to be doing as much trading as possible because their skills get better. And the skills allow them to estimate the values, to gauge how likely the trader is to, to go for a deal and how happy he is with the deal, because the happy trader means good reputation back in the mountain homes. If a trader goes back and is like, this place was amazing, they had so much wealth, they just gave me things. And, oh, by the way, King, here's a, a, a statue made of stone. They, they sent her as a gift. All that sort of thing is, is factored into migrant ways. So very, very happy traders mean very, very good reputation at the mountain homes, which means lots of migrants come along because they think this place is made of rainbows and, and every piece of stone is actually sweets. Dwarven rum. Dwarven rum flavored sweets. Yep. True facts. Okay, we want Avak to go there, so hopefully Avak will make his way there shortly. I 
I'm gonna let this uh, episode draw out a little bit longer. Hopefully, just until we get Avak in the place. Oh no, he's here! Ha ha! Finally! I say finally. He actually did that quite fast. Well done, Avak. You you managed to negotiate your way out of the meeting with the liaison and have left him behind. Because the liaison's there now, like, well, <laughs> I've got to get this meeting sorted so I can go home. But uh, we want to do trading first. Now, greetings from the Martin Homes. Your efforts are legendary there. That's good. Hopefully they'll be more legendary when I've uh, sold you a bunch of uh, Dolmite Scepters and Shale Scepters and Shale Amulets. Now, none of these are particularly awesome unfortunately the, you'll notice some things have got brackets around them those are things that we didn't make in this case they're things that we brought with us um and that's cool but the the ones without the brackets are the ones that we actually made and again the the kind of prefix and, and suffix the, the the markings on either side in this case a minus shows you that there's a a, a modifier to the value to the quality you can look at it with v so let's have a look. This is a well-crafted shale bracelet. That's quite cool. I don't think any of these have been decorated with anything, though. You can decorate things with bones or, or shells or horns or pearls or, or anything. You can encrust them with gems, and that will all modify the value. That will multiply it, and it's very good to try and get a, a nice stock of just a couple of things that were well-made and then well-decorated by well-prepared things. Because the, the value of a simple ring can become quite staggeringly high if you've decorated it in several different types of bone from different types of fish and you've got hanging rings of copper off it and it's menacing with spikes of shale. Yeah, trust me, it, it's really, really good. But let's go ahead and stick those on there. Now, some of these are actually quite heavy. That's because they... Oh, no, we don't want to sell those. It's because they've been made of rock. And the, as I said, the weight would be an issue if we didn't have actual caravans here. Now, as you can see, these things, the rough opals, they're worth a lot more than most of these. But some of them aren't too bad. But we do not have very much that we can trade with. Currently, we're offering 330 units of whatever currency it is. So we've got to have a look through here. At the moment, the first caravan, I'm generally focused on getting food. Food and drink. But I will have a look for any any really good deals. Um, steel wheelbarrow? No thanks. Wow, that's 1,500. Maybe you could get quite a lot of steel out of that, though. So that would be a, an interesting thing to get. Um, let's have a look. Uh, one thing I should have actually asked the liaison for was gypsum powder. Because you can use that to make plaster casts, which Revocane may need to make if our dwarves get hurt. But uh, I forgot. So we'll have a look through here. Now you can... I could have easily just told them to sell the whole barrel. Uh, the whole good, finished goods bin, which has in total 370 on it. Um, but I didn't do that because there's loads of things in there, like those things. And down here the same with that. If you're shy on wood, you might not want to be selling your whole bins as well. And so you just go through them and individually select things. Uh, got some armor there, but not, again, not too interested. The cheese down the bottom I was interested in, but uh, I don't want to spend too much. We'll get some llama wood, wool yarn, though. And some... Actually, that's really cheap. Some cave spider silk thread. Um... No, we won't grab these. We want these so that we can actually make stuff out of them. Yeah, I'll grab a couple of those. Now, the plump helmets. Yeah, go on. Oh, wow. These got quite a lot. We'll take five. Take all five of those for 20. And we'll do the same here as well. Because we can, if nothing else, use that to make drink. But we can also cook them, which is pretty good. Uh, right. Okay. Now, lobster is pretty good because they've got shells. So we'll be able to de-shell them and actually use the shell to decorate other things as well. So we'll take these. Thank you very much. We're up to 130. No, we're going to keep taking the cave lobster. If they had any turtles, I'd take them as well. But alas, no. Uh, prepared llama kidney. Heart, yeah. We'll take all of these. Now, anything else? Toad meat. Okay. I'll, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll try new things. Steel anvils, we do not need. Um. Okay, turkey bone crowns. No, thank you. Thank you, but no. 
Bronze bolt. That's expensive. But I'm very tempted. Yeah, we'll take... Hmm, we're getting really close now. I, I think... No, we're going to take those off. I may come back to them if we've got enough to uh, afford them. But we're going to take some thread. Some more wool. Oops. I'm turning them off instead of uh, selecting them. We'll take the wool. Um, I think that's really going to be all we're going to be able to afford for now, unfortunately. Let's see. Anything else? No, it doesn't look like it. I find it is... Ultimately, the trader isn't here to be generous with you. He's not here to make an even trade. With high skills, you might be able to convince him to, but he still would be a little bit annoyed when he went back and he's like, well, I actually made no money on that trip whatsoever. Um, they're interested in making profit, so generally aim a little bit low. Um, maybe 10% of what you're trading is a good mark. I, again, with better skills, you can, you can afford to do more. Sometimes they'll flat out say, no, I want more stuff. But we're going to try and trade this, so we'll press T. Um, perhaps you'll consider this superior proposal. What? I'll consider the offer, but I'm going to immediately say no to it. You want all of that? I am afraid not. I will give you some onyxes, though. How about this trade? No! I'm not going to give you those things. You can bugger right off. Okay, we'll take, we'll take back some of the uh, wool that I selected, I guess. Damn it. Where is it? I'm sure it is up here. Maybe not. Okay, we have to go down here till I can find the wall. Okay. Right. Okay, the trader will make 130 profit. Is that enough for you, you miser? Okay. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for your business. Hopefully he's happy with that. Now, we can send some things as a gift. Again, though, uh, I'm not really... I'm going to offer that as a gift to our, our lord back in the mountain home. So, go on. I will see that our leader gets this offering. You better make sure he does. But that's it for the trading. Now, Avak will go back and we'll continue doing meetings, but we have already gone way past the uh, the wrapping up point for this episode, but I wanted to get the trading itself out of the way. He will go back and do the meetings, but we'll do that in the next episode. But for now, that is it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed the episode, and I hope you will join me for the next. But from myself... And from everyone in Cadenvere, do take care.